It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Well, I've got some interesting statistics for you this morning, Bob, as usual. Oh, per all right, huge. let's hear it. Well, a recent survey found that people have just too much cash. The average mm. U.S. adult currently holds $32,286 in cash, and it's estimated that 39% of Americans aren't investing at present, which you know a lot of them, 32% of them, claim that their money in cash is better to have easy access to, while 28% hang on to their cash because they don't know how to invest it. So it's a cash crisis, I guess, with too much cash. I think the one thing they fail to realize is that anything below 2%, you're losing money. So you think uh, you know the, we have a passbook mentality where each month the statement stays the same. But unless you're making over 2%, and most cash pays what, right? It's not pretty. I mean, I think the, the average money market in the country is probably less than 1% right now. Yeah, so if you're losing 1% a year, you know, you're just slowly going broke in your lifetime. Yeah, it's true. It's uh, Cash does not pay. So uh, <laughs> disturbing statistics, Bob, but that's why we're here to help you on your path to financial freedom to make sure you get your money growing over inflation. And we've got a great show this morning for you. We're going to talk about the retirement guessing game. When it comes hmm. to your retirement planning, you're going to have to make some guesses about some important questions. Bob and I are going to break down some of these for you. We're going to talk about greed. Pigs get fat. Hogs get slaughtered. We're going to discuss how greed can ruin a great retirement plan. Along with this week's financial propaganda, there's a lot of stuff out there in the media, the news that you just need to avoid to make sure your planning's on track. And we have our spotlight segment where we have my brother, Bob's son, Chris Payne on the show. He's going to talk about a real retirement plan that he worked on. He's going to talk about some of the things he did to help a couple get on track with their retirement, some tips, some things that you can do with your own planning and investing to make sure you're on track. So let's get right to it. Let's talk about building a retirement plan and some of the guesses you may have to make. Let's face it, Bob, retirement plan really is not a perfect science, right? Well, there is some science to it, but I think it's more an art than a science or maybe a little bit of both. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment, right? I mean, there's no way to perfectly project things out, but you can make what we would call maybe educated guesses about it. But I think some of the questions that you want to be asking yourself in retirement, you've got to do a little bit more than just guessing. You know, you have to be a bit more like approximately right, let's say. And I think you know, one of the most important questions you need to ask yourself is, how much money am I going to need on a monthly basis? Right. That's the big shocking statistic. Invariably, when you ask someone how much they're going to need to live on a retirement, what's the answer you get? And I'm going to guess, and this is the experience we have with most people that come into our offices, is I don't really know. You know, I think, <laughs> I don't even know what I really spend. I mean, let, let's take it a step further. You know, at, at the end of the year, I just know that I haven't really broke the bank, right? Again, we see that all the time. The second thing I ask is, you know, how much did you save last year? What's the answer to that normally? Same thing. I don't know, right? Because if you don't know what you're spending, you probably don't know what you're saving. They kind of go hand in hand. I think it's a lot to do with my generation. We work hard. We've always prided ourselves on our work ethic, and it's like, okay, I'm going to enjoy myself, and if I run out of money, I'll just work harder. But you can't do that in retirement. Right, exactly. That's the thing. You know, We talk about it all the time when you're going from that wealth creation stage to what we call the wealth distribution stage. The game changes, right? It's not about, I can just work harder, I can make it up. It's really about, okay, these are the assets I have. How am I going to use them to live on them? And what's my budget? You know, What can I really expect to spend in retirement? And how does that correlate with what I'm spending right now? Yeah, and that's where the science comes in, right? You can't guess at this. You have to really sit down and put a pencil to paper. And that's what I love about our portal, you know, our paying capital management financial portal, is that if you, if you just add in your banking accounts, it does all the budgeting for you. It tells you exactly where you're spending your money. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to sit down over the weekend and get an Excel spreadsheet and write down how much I mm -hmm. spend at Starbucks. Yeah, no. And I think that's one of the things you have to take advantage of with technology. And that's why I love our 360 portal as well, Bob. There's so many great tools now you can use 
that essentially break down what your spending already looks like. And it's not that hard. You just plug in your different credit cards, your checking accounts, and you get a nice breakdown by category of where the money's actually going. And it's just so much easier than it used to be. And that's why it's like, if you're gonna do a budget, now is the easiest time to actually do that. Yeah, because the biggest fear in retirement is I'm gonna run out of money. So why not run some simulations, run some projections so you know, because it's not just about your expenses, right? What are some of the other things you gotta be concerned with? Yeah, the other thing is when it comes to your planning is you gotta know about, think about some of these major expenses that might not just be on your radar screen. Like, you know, for instance, Bob, let's be real. You're gonna probably buy a couple new cars when you're retired, right? The car that you have now isn't gonna last forever. I know, I hear that all the time. This is the last car I'm ever gonna buy. Well, guess what? (laughs) They don't make these things to last forever, they wear out. And you might wanna have some fun in retirement. I know I do. What about a boat, right? Do you know any boat owner that's ever bought a smaller boat? <laughs> no, they, they only get bigger and bigger, Bob. And then look at vacations. I mean, people are traveling all over the world. We had, I, I called a client yesterday. They were sitting in the uh, Delta airport getting ready to board a flight to Africa for a three-week safari. So vacations are big. And, you know, you, you can spend a lot of money on vacations. Yeah, a lot of money on vacations. That's the fun stuff. And then there's the unfun stuff, too. Like, we talked about cash earlier in the show already. Let's be realistic here. Things are going to cost more in the future. You have inflation and your money mm-hmm. needs to grow to keep up with that. You know, you definitely have to factor in that your purchasing power is actually going down over time and you're going to need more money later on just to do the same things. Well, that's the problem with inflation. It's hidden. It's insidious. It sneaks right up on you. But, you know, just think about it. Whatever you're spending today, you're going to be spending twice as much in 20 years. It doesn't matter what your age is. 20 years is not that long a period of time and it's gonna cost you twice as much. But there's really one big factor in your expenses that uh, everybody really needs to focus on. What do you think that is, right? You mean it gets worse, Bob? <laughs> it gets worse. Yeah, so the, the other big expense is healthcare costs, right? And that uh. is probably, for our generation now, it's probably gonna be one of the biggest because we are living longer, so the odds are we're gonna spend a lot more money on healthcare. Well, you know, it drives me crazy, Ryan, right? and nobody told me this when I was born, that the parts that you're born with wear out. <laughs> that's 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 terrible to hear. It is terrible to hear. I mean, I have so many of our, our current clients are having knees replaced, hips replaced. We had a client with a heart transplant, and I'm happy to report we were at a wedding two weekends ago, and she was dancing. I mean, it was just fabulous. But it's incredible what healthcare can do today to keep you alive and keep you living. But, boy, the costs are unbelievable. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, there's just so many things you need to account for, and you can't guess. So if you're thinking to yourself, I'm tired of guessing. I need to get a real plan, a real budget in place, figure out what my real expenses are going to be. We want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review Simply bring in those statements, just put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're gonna go through all of it for you. We're gonna build your own personalized portal, help you build a budget, and then we're gonna look at all the critical components to your portfolio from a thousand feet up. We're gonna look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. What is your income gap gonna be? How are you gonna replace it? Bob and I are gonna show you how to optimize or fill in that income gap in retirement. We're gonna look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs. I know it's shocking in your investment portfolio. Those annuities, those insurance products, brokers products. Bob and I are going to show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. And we're going to look at diversification. What risks, what pitfalls do you have in your portfolio? If the market corrects tomorrow, are you protected? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan we're going to determine that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or more, more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies? Now we have literally worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us You hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. 
or simply click the Get Started button on BeBullish.com. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there this week in the world of financial propaganda? Well, Riley, I found out why it's so popular. Wow. Well, that's, uh, that's news. Why is it so popular? Well, it turns out that doom and gloom sells. It sells well. And according to a British philosopher, a fellow named John Stuart Mill, to sum it up, he said, quote, I have observed that not the man who hopes when others despair, but the man who despairs when others hope is admired by a large class of persons as a sage. Now, when did he write that, right? That sounds like that was a long time ago. I'm going to say it was, as a wild guess, the 1800s. 1828 that was written. Hey. And sure enough, <laughs> sure enough, it's working today. So when you have somebody like Jim Rogers get up on CNBC or write an article saying that the next bear market will be the worst in our lifetime, guess what happens? People tune in. Now, why do people like to hear this stuff? I mean, I guess it sounds profound, right, when you talk about uh, having some gifted insight into the future and knowing things that are going to happen that we all don't know, and it plays on our fear, because I guess inherently we're all fearful on some level, and it probably speaks to that more visceral emotion, is my guess, Bob. Yeah, for whatever reason, Rod, people like to hear the world's going to hell in a handbasket, and, and they <laughs> actually get really ticked off when some optimist like us intrudes on that uh, ne negative thought. But, you know, there are some things that you can do, right? First of all, you can't ignore negativity but you can discount it, right? So whenever you hear something very negative, look for more of an alternative positive story to try and, you know, and balance that out. But at the end of the day, it really it comes down to what we talk about all the time, and that's diversification. That's the only way that you can overcome this negativity. And you know what? If people are going to react to it, we're going to take advantage of it. Yeah, no, exactly right. And I think that's, we talk about this a lot on the show, but it's, it's about having what we call an all weather portfolio because mm -hmm. no one really knows what's going to happen next. If we really did, if we had this gifted insight into the future, like I was saying, you and I'd be on our yacht, Bob. We wouldn't be here <laughs> pontificating about the stock market. We would, we would know already, but nobody really knows already. So what I think is really important, especially as you're getting close to retirement, and into retirement is ask yourself the question, is my portfolio ready for any scenario, right? So if the market, let's say the market could skyrocket next couple of weeks, are you prepared for that? If the market does go down, are you prepared for that? Well, it all comes down to investing and that's really what financial propaganda is about. It's about preventing you from not only investing wisely, but from investing at all. And that's why we're seeing $15 trillion dollars in cash today because you are more worried about what happened in 2008 and 2000 than you are about what's happened over the last 300 years, which is that financial assets have been going up your entire lifetime. Yeah. And it's against the difference between the short game and the long game, right? I mean, let's also be realistic at this point. I mean, most of you, if you're going to retire, you're probably going to be retired for a long time, you know, 20, 30 years. So you need a plan that's going to account for 20, 30 years not thinking about what's going to happen over the course of the next six months in the stock market. And it's very hard to do that when the news every day is, is saying this is going to happen, that's going to happen. But whenever you're making your portfolio, what you got to ask yourself is, how does this affect me five years from now, 10 years from now? Because that's really what's happening. When you make a decision on your portfolio, it doesn't just affect tomorrow, it affects the rest of your life. Absolutely, right. So you know, what did you find out there in the world of financial propaganda? Well, it seems like we've been talking about Morgan Stanley a lot in the last couple of weeks, and they just can't seem to embrace this market. Uh, in their latest research, they came back and said a breakdown in both legs of momentum could trigger a significant market correction. So first off, you're talking about broken legs, and we're talking about the market, and we're talking about momentum. And this stuff's sounding pretty sophisticated already, Bob. Well, I don't know about you, Rod, but I don't have any limbs in my portfolio. What I do have are small company stocks making all-time record highs. I have large company stocks making all-time record highs. I have 
stocks that have increased their dividends now for 25 years in a row, you know, I don't know what they're talking about. It and the thing is, you know, there's so many different markets. I mean, how can you just make a blanket <laughs> decision on, you know, the market's going to drop? Which market are they talking about? Well, they answer that too, Bob, so don't worry. Oh. <laughs> they said in their research report here that they're anticipating a rolling bear market that hits different parts of the market at different times. And to hmm. me, that says, well, sure. That's like saying, Bob, I think the markets are going to be volatile in the future. Like, when is it going to happen? What markets and when? They just anticipate at some point. It's it's just crazy. You know, that sounds like the, the broken clock strategy. You know, <laughs> I'm going to be right twice a day. So I'll just say it, or maybe I'll be right once every decade. But how does that help you achieve your financial goals if you're worried about short-term movements that can't be predicted and listening to someone who's going to be right one day sometime when you least expect it? You know, it's even worse than that because like in this report, they say another line here is they said the bull market could be in its last innings. Not that it is. It could be. <laughs> well, great. That's yeah. really helpful. Thanks. <laughs> you know, I could no, win the Jupiter lottery tomorrow, bars, but I might but not. I don't think there's a high probability of that happening tonight. <laughs> if you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. 888 or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Here's this week's spotlight on no pain, no gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And now we have a very special guest on the show. My brother, Bob's son, financial advisor, Mr. Chris Payne. Good morning, brother. Hey, right. Thanks for being here. It's an honor. Hey, it's, a it's a pleasure. Pleasure is all mine, brother. I agree, actually. <laughs> we got the house of pain today, guys. It is the house of pain today. So, Chris, this is our spotlight segment. This is where each week we take a real case, a real retirement plan. We dissect it and we look at some of the mistakes, some of the flaws in the planning and how you basically corrected it. So why don't you tell us about the case you worked on and some of the different adjustments you made to get this couple or this woman in this case on track with her retirement? Yeah, sure. Right. So a couple interesting things about this. One of the things that was really important to this person was that they were looking for someone that was a fiduciary. Right now, she's with someone that is not a fiduciary. And I asked why that was important. And she said she didn't really feel comfortable that the investments that were in her portfolio really met her own best interests. It's very insightful. Yeah, I thought so. It doesn't happen too often. So you know, what we did was we, we took everything that she had today and did our three page comparison spreadsheet. And a couple of things were blaringly obvious. The first thing was just looking at her projections, you know, and some of the things that she wanted to accomplish over the next 30, 40 years. I got the impression she didn't really need to take a lot of risk. And in looking at her portfolio right now, that's just not the case. She's taking a lot of risk for a couple of different reasons. One, she has way too much money in risk assets, so things like equities. Two, the portfolio is very heavily under diversified. So, you know, everything is concentrated in one single area. So, you know, really what that means is if we had a big market pullback, she would have a big impact to our, our, her portfolio necessarily. So, you know, that was pretty scary to her, you know, when I informed her that, you know, she's taking more risk than she needs. She was taking that kind of risk right up front. She didn't even know that she had the kind of risk in the portfolio that the spreadsheet or the portfolio analysis you put together showed. Exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a problem because you get a statement. It just tells you the name of your investments. It doesn't tell you how much risk is in that investment or what the volatility is. And, you know, look, if you're going to have a, an, an equity investment, it's going to be risky. It's going to be volatile. But as you get older, when you're my age, for example, you don't have the time on your side, you know, to recover from those inevitable declines. And that's a great point, Chris, that you don't see that on the statement. You need someone to do an analysis to show you the history 
of the volatility of that portfolio. Exactly. And the other thing, you know, to your point, Dad, is that other things that you see on the statement, she didn't really understand. So one of the things I brought up to her, I said, you know, why is your advisor writing covered calls? Why are they writing options in your portfolio? And she looked at me dead in the eye. And she said, Chris, I, I'm sorry. I don't know what an option is. I don't know what you're talking about. Wow. And I went on wow. to explain that in the portfolio, the advisor is actually writing something called a covered call. Uh, they're writing options, which is a really high risk strategy to help generate income. Now, as everybody knows, we're really big fans of generating income. I like to say that you get a better outcome with income. But, you know, there's a like lot that. there's a lot of ways you can do that without taking more risk. And in this case, she's taking a lot more risk by using this high risk strategy. That's you know, one really of the goals common. of being capital management is to make sure that people know what they own and why they own it. Now, she knows what she wants to do, but she didn't know what she owned. And as she finds out, it may not do what she needs it to do. And that, that's really great that your analysis just, just sticks out, Chris. It just jumps out at you that uh, she doesn't have the right portfolio for her stage in life. Exactly. And I pointed out to her, I said, you know, you're generating a lot of income in your portfolio. And I said, it's going to cover your needs until you have to start taking Social Security. I said, but you're taking a lot of risk to get it. So what I showed her was a strategy that was a lot lower cost, a lot less risk, and she can generate enough income for the rest of her life without really having to touch the overall principle. Yeah. And that's the name of the game, right? It's it's like, let's make this so that you have high, high odds of success so that there is you know very little doubt that you're going to achieve your goals. And you know, I just love the fact that this advisor clearly was talking way over her head, keeping her in the dark, essentially, so that she didn't really understand what was going on. You know, a lot of people in our industry just have to make things so complex and have to uh, kind of essentially talk down to you like you don't know anything or don't want to know anything. It's crazy. What's the matter with you guys? I've been telling you this for 40 years. They do it so they can charge the client more. Chris, <laughs> how much more was this client being overcharged because of this you know, supposed complexity? Over a half a percent more. Wow. <laughs> that's real money. That's like four or five grand a year. Yeah, it's huge. And that's money that could go towards living her lifestyle and reaching her goals. So, yeah. Chris, when you take the expenses that are now not, you know, they're not going to that stockbroker and they're now going in the client's pocket, and then you go with the added yield that you're adding by going to more conservative investments, how much more a year will this portfolio generate? It's going to generate about $5,000 more a year, but you got to remember we're taking a lot less risk to get there. So, you're going to have a higher probability of getting that income. And with the lower expenses and the higher yield, aren't you increasing it by almost 3% a year? Absolutely. So 3% over 20 years, you're basically going to add another half a million dollars in net worth. Yeah, and that's real money. I, I, I got to tell you, I wouldn't say no to half another half a million dollars. <laughs> that's very benevolent of you, Chris. <laughs> well, you know, Chris, if you're sitting there right now and you can throw a half a million dollars out the window, I want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> the things we've talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That is why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. It's a full holistic review just like this where we analyze everything. Just bring those statements in, bring them in a folder. We're going to go through all of it for you. We're going to build you your own personalized portal, and we're going to do a full holistic analysis. So we're going to look at all these critical things. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? Is your advisor talking over your head and charging you a lot of commissions? We're going to show you exactly how to reduce that cost so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at income. Income so critical in retirement. Creating a secure income stream that's reliable throughout your lifetime is a core component to a proper investment strategy. We're going to show you to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? If the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and protect your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Using strategies, our family, we've been perfecting now for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk in the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 
6692 and tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit our website bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation call or text 844-752-6692 that's 844-752-6692 or simply click the get started button on bebullish.com Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.